this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is quite possibly the most interesting product that Razer has ever released in my mind. This is the Razer Audio Mixer, a compact box that will allow you to control multiple audio sources for streaming purposes, and it's very comparable with the Go XLR Mini. And I'm going to do a video separately to compare those two and talk about the small differences between them and what makes them interesting. In this video though, I'm going to be unboxing and showing off Razer Audio Mixer, talking to you about the various highlights of it and the lowlights, talking about what I like about it and what I don't, and the various features of it, as well as showing off the settings and going into various things on it. Stick with me to the end, for example, to see me go into the Razer Synapse software and show you all the tweaks that you can make to the various sound settings so you can get an audio like this. Now, I'm using the Shure SM7B and this audio mixer together to deliver the voiceover for this video, so I'm going to show you the settings for that later on. But that's interesting in itself because the Shure SM7B is known to be difficult to get sounding good and this is a box that's capable of doing that. It's also able to deliver phantom power. So if you're using a microphone like the Blue Ember XLR condenser microphone that requires phantom power, then you can get it powered through this. But more interesting than that, it is also able to pull in multiple different audio sources. It has optical inputs and 3.5mm line in and out, so you can connect up, for example, a games console and also a streaming PC or other audio sources that come through a 3.5mm. Now in the box you'll see that there's also a few different bits. You have the mixer itself in that little bag and then these tiny little boxes with the Razer logo on them and these are designed to plug in 3.5mm connection and remove any electrostatic hum that you might have on your system either from external sources or from your headset, for example. So you might find there's some feedback and you can remove that using those little boxes as a USB-C connection cable, USB-C to the audio mixer, USB-A to your PC. That powers the box as well. And that also gives you enough power for phantom power, which means that you don't need to worry about plugging it into a wall. So there's no wall socket mounting here or anything. And it's a tiny little compact box that will sit nicely on your desk, as you saw from the beginning of this video, it's quite comparable with the GoXLR Mini. That was equally small, perhaps a little bit taller. This thing sits a little bit flush on the desk by comparison. But it's a tiny little box of tricks that does a lot more than it looks like it does. And a lot of that power comes in the software. So make sure you stick with me to the end and I'll show you some of that. But as you can see, you have four different audio channels and you can route different audio into it and then basically mix that all down and put it out as one single source into Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio and then use that on Twitch or YouTube or wherever you're streaming to. And so you're able to control the sound from each of these channels. Let's say you have a mic channel, Discord for game chat, you have game audio and you have music, for example. You can assign each of those to each of the sliders. You can mute each of them individually and you can adjust the volume up and down. It also has a beep button, so you can beep out swear words like this. So you can do something like that. And there's a push to mute button as well. So there's lots of different things that you can do at a hardware level. Now on the back, you'll see it has the XLR connection. You also have line in and line out, so you can send signals out to PCs or you can bring signals in from various consoles. As I said, it has optical connection, so you can connect up some consoles. Others can use the 3.5mm connection to send the sound that way. I'll leave all that information in the description. And one of the things that you might notice here is that there's quite a sheen beneath those sliders on the top of it. And that is quite a dust magnet. Now, a close up of the back, you can see the 48 volt phantom power button alongside the other connections that I was talking about. So you can press that button or you can turn it on within the software to give you that power boost if you need it. I'm showing you some of the steps of the setup process here with the Rode PodMic. I'm obviously using the Shure SM7B for this voiceover, as I said, but it does give you the flexibility to use multiple different microphone options. And one of the things that makes this particularly interesting in my mind is that it also has the ability to connect up with a 3.5mm microphone, and you can even connect up a 3.5mm USB microphone. So if you're using a USB microphone plugged into your PC, you can also run a 3.5mm connection cable into this box and then you can monitor that and other things you'll also see that on the front you have both headphone and microphone jack from a headset so at the front of that you can plug both of those in and you can actually use the headset mic through this box and control it that way and get your microphone audio in there this gives you options because it means you can purchase this box 
even if you don't have an XLR mic, then you can upgrade into an XLR mic in the future. So you can do bit by bit on your system, which is pretty neat and not something you see very often. Usually if you're buying something like this, you're buying it for an XLR mic or with an XLR mic. So you do have an upgrade path here. You'll notice obviously that this box has RGB on it. It is Razer, so what do you expect? There's multiple different points that are controllable in terms of the RGB as well. Razer logo, each of the buttons has controllable RGB and changeable. You can set up various different RGB effects within the software, and I'll show you that in a second, including on the faders. And it can react to your voice or the sound as well, so you can make it react to the sound levels, for example, of your voice or of the music that's playing or the sound that's playing. You can see some of it happening here on channel one where the mic's picking up some of the sound from me and then it just goes through there and there's various different schemes you can choose what suits you you can have static effects or you can go through different color ranges and different visuals when the 48 volt phantom power button is on it's also illuminated so you know what's happening there so what you're seeing already is a very controllable piece of kit but the features of it are hidden and buried in the software because there's a lot of different things you can do in terms of routing audio sources in the software and the controls over there. You also have things like a voice changer that I'll show you a bit later on and also uh, the ability to adjust things like noise gate, compressor settings and other things to tweak the audio and set it up the way you want it. And so that is where it shines the most. Obviously you can see some of that RGB. Now I'm going to show you what you can do within Razer Synapse software. Here I am within Razer's Synapse software and I'm on camera just so I can demonstrate that they're sort of doing this live and that you can hear the quality changes as I make changes in the software. Also to demonstrate that this is the short SM7B being powered by the audio mixer. This is a microphone that's renowned to be difficult to drive or at least people believe it is and that's because it requires some tweaks to it before you can get it to work and sound really good. And one of the surprising things about this is really easy to set up within Razer's audio software and using this mixer and very simple. But I'm going to show you some settings and tweaks that you can make to it to improve it and things that I've done and also other things that you can do in here. So there's a lot of different things that you can do within this. It is a mixing software, which means that you can choose, for example, various different audio sources. You can see as default, it has mic, game, chat and music set here. And you can choose different things so you can see that you can select optical as one of the options down here you also have line in which is the 3.5 mil connection at the back so you can run in streaming pc and other things so you can do that sort of logic or you can plug in a 3.5 mil connection the first thing to do however go into your sound settings in windows and you will find that there are two main options that we need to use you need system as the output so system Razer Audio Mixer, it's marked as three here, and then Microphone Razer Audio Mixer, and that's obviously the mic is then going in, and then the system sounds is what you can hear. What you will notice is there are other options that are marked as Razer. You can see, for example, chat and music here, and I'll go into a bit more depth on those in a minute. But you need to make sure it's system and microphone. And then what we can do is then we can go into the mixer settings and you can see some of the things in here. Now, immediately I will mention that one of the problems that I know encountered with this software to begin with is that the playback mix was basically set somewhere in the middle so that I wasn't hearing what I was saying. So you need to make sure you put that all the way up. There's two different sort of audio source things here. You've got playback mix and stream mix. So the playback mix is the level of what you're hearing. And then you have the stream mix, which is the level of what your audience is going to hear. And that's also what you will put into OBS, which I'll show you a bit later on. So you have a choice on the volume. So you can have different volumes for your audience versus for you. You can also decide what audio goes where. So a uh, thing here that's really cool immediately is that you'll see that you have music as an option, for example. So we untick music from the stream mix. So that means if you're streaming on Twitch and you have music that you're listening to, but you don't want your audience to hear, then you can untick that and then it won't be filtered into the stream mix and it therefore won't appear. Now, the way you do this is you go into the sound settings and we want to find the 
section here which says volume mixer which is down at the bottom you'll notice app volume mix you click on that and then you'll find various things in here now i have spotify open it's going to play that very briefly <laughs> so it appears here now you'll see that spotify music has appeared as an app so we can select that so we can then set that in here and we'll set that as the music so what happens then is that i can then play music via spotify and it'll play in my headphones so via the playback mix when you have 3.5 mil headset connected up to the audio mixer but it won't also pass through to the stream mix which means that you can listen to obviously any music without any worry about being copyright striked the other way around you could potentially do it the other way around so you could use harris heller's stream beats for example as an idea you could actually set the music system up so it does the opposite so you have music playing for the audience on twitch for example copyright free music just playing at a certain level there and you can adjust the levels and you'll see that you can adjust levels here so you could set it so it's quite low low level music just chilled out in the background for example and then obviously your game audio and you over the top of that and then you are not hearing it so you don't need to listen to the music and you can focus on things like hearing the sound of footsteps in the game things like that this sort of routing system is very clever I've seen it before with something like Elgato's software so Elgato has some software for its microphone Razer has something very similar now with this set up here and this mixer system and you have the ability to do various things so you can obviously change the levels of various things so you can see your line in your optical your game audio your chat audio you can adjust all that here you can also obviously adjust it on the mixer itself so you obviously have those four channels we've assigned the four channels here and then all you need to do is to go into the mixer and touch the sliders or you can press to mute them so you can see there for example that i've just pressed the game channel and that has put a mute on it so that's now muted the game audio you can also mute to the stream so the stream can't hear or you could just mute yourself and that'll still pass through so now i can't hear my own voice but you can hear me and that's horrible and i wouldn't recommend it and then you obviously have voice chat so for example we're using discord talking to your friends which i'll go into in a minute so here we are in the mic settings and this is obviously the most important thing and the most useful for you and there are some tweaks that you can make to noise gate compressor and gain settings in order to adjust the microphone and get it sounding good which is obviously an important part of this process and one of the reasons why the razor audio mixer is fantastic and why it competes with something like the go xlr mini and what you'll see is there are a few options immediately so we have phantom power 48 volts and that's not turned on at the moment i'm using a short sm7b which doesn't require phantom power but it does require some tweaks in order to get working but if you're using something like the blue ember or some other condenser microphone that requires phantom power then you can turn it on here there's also a hardware button so you can turn it on there i said it at 53 decibels of gain which i found is pretty good at the moment and you have a meter below that which registers how much of it's being picked up and the goal here is obviously not to go into the red too much and also to avoid any levels appearing when you're not talking so you can see for example if i stop talking now you won't see anything pay attention to that because in a minute that will be important that's being affected by noise gate and compressor settings can also adjust various mic equalizer settings here and go between various different sound profiles to change the quality of my voice and improve the sound and you can obviously customize that as well so that's the first step now i'm going to show you how i tweak these things and what i've tweaked in order to deliver a better quality of sound i'm going to leave the settings that i'm putting in in the description so that you can try them out for yourselves but you will find that you need to tweak things around probably so in a second i'm going to reset these sounds profiles that i've set up and then i'm going to talk, carry on talking to you but what you'll experience is that the sound will change quite significantly there will be some background noise but i'm also going to level out the sound and normalize the level so that you don't have to turn your headphones up and down so just bear that in mind actually in reality i will be a lot quieter but you won't experience that but when you do it yourself you will find 
if you're not using compressor, for example, you'll probably be a lot quieter than you want to be. And so it's important to tweak these settings around. I want to demonstrate some of that now. So in order to reset, we can go up here and we can click factory reset. This is useful if you've played around with the settings and you can't quite get it right, but you're not sure what you changed and you're not sure what to change it to or where to start from, or if you just made a mistake, or if you want to go back to basics as I'm going to do now. When I do this, obviously the sound will change from here. I know roughly that I need about 53 decibels of gain in order to get this working properly. Other things that I did that you will have noticed is went into the mixer and made sure the playback mix and the stream mix are maxed out just so I can hear myself and end up working out what the end result is going to be and then turn the mic monitor on. If you find the mic monitor doesn't work properly, I found that if you adjust the mic volume on the hardware slider, that does kick it back into life and that seems to work then. So if that's a problem, then that's one of the things you can do. So the next step is we're going to do the compressor. And when I turn that on, you'll immediately notice quite a difference. You can hear a little hiss in the background noise, which we'll get rid of in a minute with noise gate. But this also brings all the levels a bit better and makes things sound a lot nicer. But one of the things you'll notice with the compressor is now suddenly we're seeing a green appearing on the bar here, even when we're not talking. And you can apply this sort of logic. So when we're going through and we're tweaking the settings, our goal is to get rid of that, make us still sound good, get rid of the green appearing here when you're not talking or when there's other background noise and making it run a bit better. So one of the things you can do as you can pay attention to this, but you can also get your Streamlabs OBS or OBS open and you can look at the mix at the bottom and see the bars here and you can watch the mix of bars and see what happens. So if I stop talking, you should see it drop off, have a little bit of movement down here. So you can see there's a little bit of movement still. And obviously our goal is to eliminate that so there's no hiss and background noise. So the settings that I've found work, the best thing to do is to open it up to show more and there's quite a lot of different things that you can do in here. Now, you obviously need to play around with these and the goal, as I said, is to tweak these settings so that these bars drop down. But once you combine the two, you might find you need to play around with both of them. So I'm going to set this to minus 10 decibels. The softening width is 30 and the ratio is 4. And then I found at about eight decibels on gain. About two milliseconds on attack and about a hundred roughly on release. Now you can see, although it is appearing still ever so slightly, it's not constant, it's not as much and it's knocked it out a little bit. Now when we go to the noise gate settings, you'll see again, that's changed completely. And even with that turned on a basic setting with minus 15, you can see it's knocked off some of it, but I don't sound as good right now. And what you can do is you can go into here, you can adjust the threshold, the reduction, and the attack and release time. So if you push the threshold as far to the left as possible, it basically takes the noise gate completely off. So we want to basically move this slider along until the green bar stops appearing. Now you can see that's no longer appearing there. And if I just open up Streamlabs, should be the same thing. So that basic setting has then knocked off a lot of that problem. Also found that roughly 36 decibels of reduction really helps with me because I have a lot of traffic noise outside, which is also an issue there. And then these changes. Change the ratio on that.
and that if you tweak it properly and get it right but also what you don't want to do is have your voice cutting in and out and if you get the noise gate or compressor settings wrong that can lead to that sort of issue the other thing we have is a mic equalizer settings which is where you can change the sound of your voice so you can choose to have a radio voice which makes it a bit deeper and boomier there's a balanced option then there's mid focused as well and default but you can also obviously customize it so you could put in absolutely loads of bass for example or take all the bass out and make it quite tinny maybe throw in a bit of treble play around with these until you're happy with how your voice sounds now we do have some effects as well there are other things that you can do so you can turn on the voice changer and we can now have a cartoon voice and then obviously there's a bit of a monster and then there's a low pitch which is kind of a monster as well which i don't really understand what the difference is there because they sound the same to me monster hello this is the provoked prawn and i'm a bit of a monster and then we have a really high well, it says it's high pitch, but it doesn't sound high pitch from my voice. <laughs> or, or maybe it does. <laughs> anyway, you can see. So those are kind of gimmicky, but they're there as an option. And then if you want to change the sounds, you can also be in a library or you can be in a chapel or you can be in an arena or you can be in a marble room or in a small concert hall or you can set it as custom and have a very, very, very tiny room that sounds good and there are various things about these obviously they're a bit silly those are silly additions but it's nice to have some things that you can tweak now these are line in effects and you can click on these so this is if you're running something into the audio mixers from the 3.5 mil connection and i don't and i generally don't have anything that i use that for but you might if you have a console or something or a phone or something you want to run the audio source from you could run a 3.5 mil connection into here then you'll see that you can adjust the pitch and tempo of any audio input of the line in by adjusting that and you can do some fading so there's some fading with any voices detected coming in through the line in port so i suppose this will work if you've got a streaming pc set up or something along those lines or console like i said and then you have the lighting effects so the lighting i've already showed a little bit in the footage and you can see that you can basically change various elements of the lighting so you can see we can set a static color for the razor logo for example or you can make it breathe and go between different colors you can put different lighting on the faders and there's basically a background for that and then a foreground you can also have it react and so you can see that you've got an input meter for example you can make it react to when you're talking or you can make it just be you can either have it set as what the the volume level is currently for that slider or you can set it so it reacts to the sound that's going into it you can also change the color of the buttons right down to like when the mute button for each line is active what color that would be from here and what color it goes when it's inactive so when you've pressed it and then there's the mic mute button as well which is in the bottom right so you can press that temporarily to mute yourself so when you press and hold the mic mute button it turns on the um, voice changer for some reason and then yeah we can do that again let's do that again and we go go back to normal right strange but okay so the other thing you can do is obviously to set up the sound so I'm just going to use a fake thing that I have in Streamlabs so when we go into the mic you can see it's set default so we're just going to disable everything for the moment so what you want to do when you're setting this up is you go into your Streamlabs or OBS audio sources and we're looking for the mic settings so they want mic only you don't want desktop audio or anything else you want your mic only and you'll look for the stream mix stream mix 3 razor audio mix and what that does is that pulls in everything into that one audio output that will take your discord chat it will take your game audio any system sounds that you've got anything that you've decided to pull in through the audio mix so anything that you've put in here so you can see mic chat music game optical line in system for example 
So if we take game and music out, those wouldn't go into the stream mix, but you'd still hear them in here. And that's how you get it through into there. What you'll need to do in Discord, for example, is go to your sound settings. You go into voice and video, and you'll need to select the chat mic, which is voice chat. So we set voice chat on both of these. Chat. So now we've got voice chat in and voice chat out. So doing that then means that the audio from Discord from your friends then gets mixed in and then you can adjust it. So you might want to turn your friends up. So you might want to have them nice and loud or perhaps they're a bit too loud and you want to take them down a bit. And you, so you have to play around with that setting and sort of work out where you want them to be. It's also worth noting you can do all this in decibel or in percentage as well. So one of the things you will have noticed is that the hardware for the audio mixer also has the ability to plug in a 3.5 mil connection. So right now I'm using the headset mic from an Audio Technica headset that I'm currently testing out. And this is the capture quality of that. And just to reassure you, the XLR connection from the Shure SM7B is no longer plugged in. You can see <laughs> So I'm not, this is no trickery. This is a 3.5 mil connection plugged into the, into the audio mixer and, and then pushed through in the same sort of way. And you can also apply the noise gate settings as well to the same thing. So we can tweak so you can tweak the settings so you can tweak the settings here and you can do the compressor as well so if you found that your headset mic isn't doing the business then you can do it here and you can go through these it doesn't seem to have some it's not as not the same obviously it's not as powerful as the xlr but you do have the option to do that and you can still do the silly voices and whatever so that's pretty interesting. So that's an interesting option. So if you want to buy this device and then you can't afford an XLR mic at the moment, but maybe you want the power of the routing software and everything you can do with it and changing the levels and the way you route in the sound, you can do all that, but still use a headset mic for the time being and then save up and purchase a better XLR microphone. Pretty impressive and interesting and side note this microphone on this headset is apparently very good quality so watch out for that review if you're not subscribed already hit subscribe to see it so all told a very customizable and interesting little mixer box that allow you to really upgrade your streaming efforts and customize the sound that you're delivering and give you a good quality mic capture but also the ability to adjust multiple different audio sources and make things really interesting. Hopefully this has been a nice in-depth view of the Razer Audio Mixer. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and come back soon for the GoXLR Mini versus Razer Audio Mixer video. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to my extra special YouTube members who donate to the channel every month to support me. But I'd also like to ask kindly if you'd subscribe and press that like button. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.